Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to show you a simple uh, fluid flow in ANSYS Fluent. And uh, since my background is not really uh, fluid mechanics, I just keep it very simple and we go with a laminar viscous flow inside the pipe. Okay, so uh, if you go to ANSYS Fluent, Fluid Fluent Fluent, and create one and then go to geometry and make your problem simple to 2D, then go ahead and create a simple rectangle to show the 2D profile of your pipe. You can use it to show basically um, to create the model that I'm talking about. So here I'm going to make everything very simple again. And the reason is uh, I'm not super, super knowledgeable to explain everything. I know basics of fluid dynamics, but not a ton about it. So I make it very simple for you in this case. At least I know laminar uh, flow here. So here, uh, let's make the uh, length of the pipe like 10 meters and then put it kind of symmetric, although it doesn't really change much anything and change the diameter to two meters. OK, so let's say it's a pipe with two meters diameter, 10 meters length. We put it symmetric here. We go to concept and create a surface from this sketch here. And then we go ahead and generate it, right? So this is going to be the um, surface I need. I close it here and then I go to apply some mesh. Okay, so here we are going to create first a default mesh, see how it looks like. Probably it's going to be a coarse mesh like this. So what we want to do is to insert sizing for it and make it uh, quite a bit uh, finer because that was too rough of a mesh. And here you see it's about half a meter. So I change it to maybe 0.05. And then also since I'm going to apply uh, inlet velocity, outlets, maybe pressure or just outlet outflow, and then the walls, and these are the areas that uh, the boundary conditions are and the vis uh, viscosity of uh, the fluid and the interaction with the walls is going to affect. So I'm going to add some refinement here in these edge areas and make sure that uh, it creates finer mesh in these areas to uh, give me better results. Okay, so let's go ahead and generate it again or update it. And hopefully at this time the mesh is uh, a little bit more appropriate. Now, uh, again, this is not my area, but I've seen uh, that some people will create basically inflated mesh in uh, these areas that are near the walls, right? And that will improve the accuracy of your CFD calculations. So you might go with the inflation method as well. But uh, again, here, I just want to show you the basics. The other thing you want to do is to make sure you define the areas, the edges that you want to apply some condition to, like inlets, like outlet, like the walls. You give them some names so Fluent can recognize them and then you can apply the boundary conditions over there. So what you can do is you can uh, go ahead and select this edge here, right click and go to create a name selection and call this guy inlet. Do the same thing and select this one, this out edge and outlet edge and then uh, call it outlet. And then select these uh, top and bottom edges and call them wall or walls as you wish okay so now you should have these uh let me call it just wall uh these uh, name selections and you can go and save the project here or you can close it here but uh, before you go to ansys fluent you want to update the project okay so the mesh is uh, updated and those name selections are considered before you go to what to the Fluent, you see the mesh is updated. Now you go to Setup, to 
launch Fluent, and you see it's by default 2D. So I'm good to start, and then Fluent comes off, and it has a lot of things for you to set up. Okay. Say a uh, heavy, uh, I would say, program or sub program that has uh, lots of information. But here we're just going to keep it very simple and we're just going to change uh, a few to show a basic uh, laminar flow with viscosity. So here on the left are the stuff that you need to, uh, some of them you need to uh, set up, the relevant ones. And uh, you see the task page here, which is the expansion of the results on the left. And then you have the mesh here, right? And once it starts select, you also can see the plots of the residual terms. So the first thing is, uh, do you want it absolute system? Do you want it pressure-based, density-based? Do you want it steady or transient, plan or axisymmetric? Do you want to include gravity or not? So we are not going to include gravity. We want a steady state flow. We just keep it planar or load. We can use axisymmetric for this case. We make it absolute and pressure-based. Then we go to the models. And here we want the viscous flow. If we turn on energy, then we can apply uh, heat and temperature on the walls. But here we just want to keep it simple. So we go to the viscous flow and choose viscous laminar. Okay, the simplest thing. And then uh, once the models are good, we go to the materials. And by default, I only have aluminum and air. But what I can do here is to add the material I want. In this case, I want water. So I go here to the fluent database. And then I go look down for water liquid. And then copy that to the list of the material I have and close this. And so now you see that the water is added, but it doesn't mean it's necessarily applied here. It's just added to the list of material available. So if I want to apply that material to this pipe, I go to the cell zone conditions and double click on the fluid. And that should allow me to change my material from air to water and apply that. Now the water is really applied to that area. Okay, and then I can go to the boundary condition. Now you see these names are automatically inlet, outlet, wall. They are added for me. Why? Because I made those name selections. So I click on the boundary condition here, and I can see those four name selections, and then I can go and change the condition for each one. So this is my inlet. And if I double-click on the inlet, then it allows me to type in a number here. This default number is zero, but here I found that if I provide the speed of 0 0.0001, 0 0.001, sorry, uh, one over 1,000 meters per second or one millimeter per second, that makes my Reynolds number uh, in the uh, laminar uh, regime or uh, below 2,300. So this number is good for me. And the other thing is the outlet now that uh, the outlet, uh, if you click on the outlet, here you can choose the outlet. If you say, I want outflow, means what? Means uh, consider a small control volume here and whatever around the outlet. Whatever flow that comes in, that flow goes out. I don't know anything about the speed of it. I don't know anything about the pressure of it. So you can change it to whatever you want. If you don't like that, you can change it to pressure outlet, right? So say I want the pressure outlet, and then it asks you, hey, what pressure do you want? Do you want the gauge pressure to be zero, which means basically the water is going to be, uh, the outlet is exposed to the air, right? So the relative pressure is zero. You can choose that one, right? So you can choose whatever type of outlet that you want. And then for the walls, then you can choose the type of the wall, whether it's stationary or moving, right? whether there is any shear, whether there is any roughness. So here we assume the wall is a stationary and there is no roughness. So this is the good wall for me. I don't need to change anything about the internal. So this is all good about the uh, uh, material. Remember here we did the water, right? And then uh, we did the uh, walls. So everything is good right now. The next thing we want to do is to find the solver. 
And here we use the simple solver. There are other solvers too, but here we keep it on the simple solver. And then uh, these are controls if you want, right? For uh, relaxation parameters of the solver. When is it that you want it to report to you? If you want to add monitors, like measure lift, measure drag, anything for that matter, you can add them. But here, my goal is to just show basic, simple contours of velocity, pressure, maybe streamlines. So I'm not going to go to monitors. Then you can go to initialization and initialize it. And if it doesn't give you any error in the console, that means uh, the initialization is done successfully. Then you can go to calculations here and provide the number of iterations you want the algorithm. Once it reaches below the uh, error thresholds for the residuals in velocity, in mass, and so on, it will stop automatically. So this is your maximum iteration. It doesn't mean it needs to go that far. Okay, and then say calculate for me. And then here on this side, ah, you see it, it happened too fast. Let me see if I can, or I show you these plots here. So it shows you these residual plots in real time. And you see these are XY velocity and continuity. And once all the three of them fall below 10 to the negative three, which is one of the parameters I can control, then the algorithm is converged. And here it shows you in the console basically that how many iterations are done and you can see here at iteration 24 anything that i have is below 10 to the negative 3 you see this is 8 times 10 to the negative 4 so as soon as the three measures the residuals go below that error i'm converged so i don't need 1000 iteration 24 was more than enough for me okay so the algorithm is converged and now that you got what you want uh, you can go here and uh, go to the results or the post-processor of Fluent. And here we go to the results and we're going to get the results that we need. So here we are in the post-processor where we can get some results. We can get contours, we can get the streamlines, and we can get other things, right? And we can choose which areas we want to focus on. So let's say I want some contour of the velocity, call it contour 1. Then it is added for me here, right? Uh, it is going to be added here. So it says, which areas do you want to see? And I say, uh, all domains and the location, I choose symmetry one, which is basically the whole, uh, basically, pipe. I don't want just the inlet. Then it says, what variable do you want to see? And I say, I want to see the velocity u, right? I want to see the horizontal component of the velocity, which is what I want. And then it says, how many uh, shades of contours do you want? So you can choose as many as you want. Let's say I want five shapes. And then uh, once it's good to go, you can go ahead and apply it. And that should give you what? That should give you basically uh, the shape of the contours. Now uh, here, there is an apply button here. It's just too small for my window. So I you see that apply here. Uh, you, Click apply and then it shows you the velocity contour. If this is not enough, you can go ahead and change it and reapply it. And now, there we go. You can see the uh, laminar flow. As you can see, this is the parabolic profile of a laminar flow. And this is a beautiful laminar flow that you can see. Okay, so this is the inlet velocity if you want. And then uh, you can do other things. For example, you can look at the streamlines if you want, right? Or you can add more contours. Here we click on another contour and let's say we want to see the pressure contour. So we can choose as many uh, shades as we want. And before uh, you look at this contour two, uh, make sure you turn off contour one. Otherwise they're going to be on the top of each other. Okay, so turn it off. And let's say this time we also want to go with 15 shades of color and apply that. And this is the pressure. As you can see, the pressure is continuously dropping until it gets to the zero gauge pressure here, right? And, you know, the reason for the drop in pressure is the viscosity and the friction with the walls. So if you added roughness, this drop would be much more significant. So this is the pressure contour, right? This was the X contour. And you can look at Y velocity, see if there are any vertical velocities too, right? You can also add those, 
or you can add streamlines. Let's go ahead and add a streamline here by clicking on this object, or sorry, button actually. <laughs> So here you want 2D streamline or surface streamline and how many points do you want to see their trajectories? Let's say 25 points or that's too much, maybe 20 points, right? Equally spaced and which area, right? Let's say the whole uh, uh, symmetry or the whole material and then apply that and here you can see this is what these are the uh, streamlines or these are the trajectories, right? that you can see uh, basically let me add a little bit more so these are the trajectories of the particles the fluid particles that go from the left side to the right side one last thing i wanted to show you is the animation so you can click on the animation and then it allows you to animate the streamlines okay and i would say this is also a very nice thing so if you want to see those particles moving you can also uh, do this animation. There are lots of things that you can do. You can add monitors, as I said. You can create lift. You can create drag. But here, uh, really, uh, we are not looking at the flow over some profile like a um, airfoil or something. So lift and drag are not necessarily so meaningful here or not useful I would say and uh, if I make another video and I show you flow over some object then I might add monitors but here the goal was just to show you some um, basic uh, fluent calculations so hopefully uh, the video this uh, lecture was useful to you and I will see you in my next video thank you